at least this time, I was able to see the interruption before I played the music. So uh, I was able to uh, uh, avert it this time. So uh, thank you for coming back. Thank you, interwebs. Um, uh, there's been a lot of military, uh, act, a lot of military activity. So there's these flights that come, come right over my house. And, um, I don't know if you guys knew, but there was an earthquake today. When the earthquake happened, I think there was a flyover and I missed the earthquake. So is it back? Am I back? Can you hear and see me? Okay, good. Yeah, the interwebs uh, went down for a second there. So yeah, so we we yeah, so it's it's happening. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about alternate identities. Yeah, I don't tend to use alternate identities. Um, so if it's me, it's me. Um, uh, the only time I would have thought to do that would have been to like, you know, get into some forums and things where being recognized would not be a good thing, but never, never really resorted to it. Uh, so you can totally tell, <laughs> um, when it's me, but this song that I'm going to play, I was excited to play it because I myself had not heard it. So I got as far as like, the first verse, and then I was like, "No, no, no! I'm going to turn it off because I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it." So Robert uh, told me about this one, and I didn't know that uh, you guys had done this, or if you guys brought it up, it must have slipped my mind because I totally love Seru Javu, and uh, I didn't know that you guys had done a cover to put on the uh, numbers uh, tribute uh, number two which I'll find the link, or if someone has a link, you can pop it in there. Um, but I'm going to play that because it was really, really cool. And I was like, I didn't know. So again, I was led. I was led in that direction. So I'm going to turn on the visuals. We won't use a tape because that's kind of lame. We'll use the meshy one. <laughs> or the moon. I don't know. Ah, it's making me smile now.
Excellent version. That was such an excellent version. And I got to hear it for the first time today in its entirety. And I must say, that's you, you, you guys did it so well. So, so well. So if you're just tuning in, we are live. We've had a little bit of problem with the interwebs, but we are live and we are celebrating the life and the work of, I can say it, one of one of the really, really, really special people uh, to have come across my life, uh, Felipe Fega, as you guys knew him. And um, yeah, I guess... I guess the that episode uh, of the 43rd Quarren stream was the first time that I played Interleave um, by NMD, which is interesting because uh, it is on the playlist for tonight. I will be playing it. Um, unless you haven't figured it out, it's going to be mostly NMD tracks with really bad demos. <laughs> Um, of uh, a box tracks, but um, but yeah, so <laughs> so there I was, um, feeling kind of down, uh, obviously, because that news struck me hard, and um, we were talking, uh, Claudio and I, and we were talking about. Can people give us signs? You know, can can they give us some sort of sign, you know? And, you know, there's there's people that'll say that all of that stuff is in your imagination and that there's no such thing as signs. But I'm a person of faith, so I'm going to say that I absolutely believe there's signs. And one of the funniest signs that I got was this idea that he was keen on watching me work, but I wasn't feeling it. Because <laughs> I had just found out, you know, like he, he'd passed, and I was like, I don't want to get up. I don't want to do stuff. And it was that really weird feeling. It's like, well, you have to, because you're here, and you woke up, and you you got to you got to wake up, so... You're going to do some work, motherfucker. So that was like the, the, that was the image that was in my head. And so I got up and uh, I started working and working and working. And, and all these weird, perfect situations and perfect scenarios uh, happened. And uh, I can tell you that the day after that Fega passed, I painted four paintings, wrote two sets of lyrics and worked on music and pretty much one entire day of like nonstop what I would consider pressure work. Um, so it was that feeling like, all right, if he's going to be looking over my shoulder, I better be doing something. <laughs> I can't just be watching YouTube or twiddling my thumbs because that's not going to work. So, so it was one of those, those feelings where, uh, I felt compelled to work. But today, when I was picking the songs, it was, I was compelled to another song. And, and again, my memory sometimes, you know, like I'll tell a story and I'll tell, and I think we've done so many of these now that I can't remember which ones I've told and which ones I haven't. So there's going to be repeats. So one of the stories that I told Fago when we were having pizza, and I'm not sure I ever shared it on the stream, or though, although he may have asked me to and I may have, so I don't know. It's one of those situations. I told him about an experience that I had where I met Kurt Cobain in a dream backstage and we wrote a song together and that I actually got to record it. And, you know, in Fago style, he was like, what? So I think 
I either told the story and then he asked me about it. And then we told, we talked about it when one of those lunches, I don't know if you remember Claudio, which one of the ones it was, but it was either the last time we met or the second to last time we were talking about this stuff. But so today I wasn't looking in the, what I consider the synth pop folders. I was looking in the weirder folders and this weird mix of a, of a song came up that I, I know I'd played on the stream before. And um, it was like, well, there's your proof. It's like, it was as if he was saying in my ear, well, there's your proof because um, you went into a dream, you met Kurt Cobain and you were able to write a song with him and it's obvious. And so I thought, well, then that does mean that you could be a, a little bird in my ear that will inspire me to write another song or you know, do some painting. Sorry, I'm going to move this. It's bugging me. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Forgive the sounds. AMSR. Um, so, yeah, so I thought that uh, I would play that one because if you think hard enough, if you have enough energy to bring him in, uh, I think... He's the sort that will give you a little, a little nip, just to make sure that you kind of got the you got the message. And uh, it, there's not many people that have done that that have passed. Like I didn't have that experience when my mom passed at all, um, but I did have it when Brooks passed, and I definitely felt it this time with Vega, and I felt it especially this time with Vega. So, speaks volumes of the energy. Uh, that's all I can say about that. You know, for those that believe, then you know what I'm talking about. But, um, so, yeah, and I'm going to show the art that I did, even though it may, it may not seem, it may seem nonsensical in a weird way. But there was a, a, a way that I was compelled to work on these pieces that told me I'm on the right track. And in fact, he helped, I say he helped because this is how it was. I felt like it was a, a sort of, like he took on a managerial role for a day and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what you got to do. That's going to be perfect to do that thing you were talking about. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. And so I was like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll do it. And so it kept me working. If you want to know how much art I did, I worked on so much art that I was up until three o'clock in the morning and I was still doing art, uh, physical art, collage art, <laughs> liquid rubber stuff, digital NFT stuff. I was working on all kinds of stuff. Uh, so I feel like, ah, so I feel like I feel like he was with me today and I feel like he helped me pick these out. So I'm going to play this song that um, I used to keep to myself its origin, but this happened in a dream where I met Kurt Cobain. We sat down, we wrote this song together and I, I asked him, can I take this? And he said, yes. And I took it with me. And the next morning when I woke up, I knew I had a song. We recorded it. It's on an album. So I'm going to play that one next. Um, I'm turning on the distortion cam for this. <laughs> this, is, this is called Identify Yourself, the Alternate Mix.
So that's how I came to think that we can kind of delve into those energies. So I'm not going to doubt it with uh, Vega at all. So, and he's always welcome uh, to hang out <laughs> and still come over and watch me work. I'll, I'll love every minute of it. So it's all good. So, <laughs> it's interesting. So Denise says, signs are for people who can see them, kind of like ghost. If you don't believe, you took the first step going the opposite way. Keep your eyes open. Vega gets to stay here for a while. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to let, I'm going to let him hang out as much as he wants. Um, because once again, he, uh, he disarms me. So, which is, which is, which is easy. It's an easy thing when I'm, when I feel disarmed, I work. So for me, it's some, um, so I promised I was going to show you the drawings, but I'm going to tell you that you're not going to see all of them. So this is a weird thing because I had worked out, well, it's not going to matter to you what, what I had worked out. So this is two-sided, and the reason it's two-sided is because they're eventually going to be put together digitally. So the first one was this, which is just a weird, just weird abstract, and you can't see the details, and I don't expect you to. But if you notice, if I do this, I have the top part. So there's a top part and the bottom part. So obviously I would have to scan these, but this was one of those weird exercises where I thought I'm going to work on these really strange abstract pieces that later will, will wind up on something. And uh, he was pointing the way. So yeah, see, it looks kind of like a hammer, but it's not. There's a lot of weird things in here. So, so that was the first one. And then came this one. Again, these are just really strange abstract drawings. So then came this one, um, which, uh, you know, it was, ah, it's hard to get it to focus on it. Just strange, strange pieces. And this last one, this is why I felt like he was here, kind of giving me some guidance, because I, uh, I was doing these weird uh, things. I've been doing them where I chop up pieces of magazines and like uh, odd textures and things that I spray paint with, you know, rubber and all kinds of weird stuff is in the art. So I was going through old drawings and this old drawing that was on a printer was there and it was like it was as if he said that's the one and i'm like well i'm gonna cut this up and he's like no no don't cut it up i'm like no i'm gonna cut it up now you said it this is the one i'm cutting up <laughs> so it was one of those funny things so we wound up i see how i said we so i wound up going to the garage cutting up this drawing and then coming back and then working on it and then This was the final result. Uh, let's see if you can see it, which is that one. And uh, it's not finished yet because it still works in progress. So he was he helped me out. And then, of course, I got a song out of it, which I played today. So. So, you know, he's been a, he's been a busy bee from what I've heard. I heard he wasn't uh, that I wasn't the only one obviously, but I feel like uh, I can catch some some bits and bits and presences of him like pointing me in the right direction. And that's good because I need that sometimes. So I feel like, you know, I don't know if I said this earlier, but uh, I, I was telling Claudio this on the phone the other day that you have to understand that these streams, they're not they're not that easy for me because I'm used to, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm used to being on stage. I don't really do streams. It's not something I've gotten better. I think, I hope I've gotten better, 
But the reality is this was never something that I ever even entertained in that sense, like to do it permanently. And um, when I would start the stream, all I would see was just him saying hello on the chat and saying like, I'm here. And to me, that was just enough. It was just enough. It wouldn't matter if there was only going to be five people. And I'm pretty sure we know who those five people would be. But it was that funny feeling like if there's not going to be anyone here, as long as he's here, I'm good. I'll, I'll feel confident. I'll get my confidence level up. And so he really helped me with that in a, in a funny way. Because, And it's not that I'm not a confident individual. I am. But it's just this streaming thing was always like I was at odds with it. And it was just like that gesture of being the first one on the dance floor. It's like, let me give you a hand with this. And um, so... Uh, of course, I'm grateful for this, you know. Um, so I am happy that all of you remember him so fondly. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where it is hard, man. How could it not be hard? Yeah, it, it's hard. Oh, man. Hard stuff. But I'm going to play a song. <laughs> I'm going to play the song that uh, that he was suggesting someone listen to from Corin Stream 43, which was, of course, Interleave, um, which was a, a really well done version of the song. Um I tend to be very picky about anyone who does a cover because obviously, you know, it's the thing that happens, right? I've been blessed that so far I've 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 had good ones, but this is one of my favorites. I'm going to play that and shut up. <sighs> overhead, overhead. Thank you. We'll we'll keep this one on. Ah, I just noticed I decided to wear a striped hat with a striped shirt so I look like I'm in prison. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm going to play the song now.
I did plenty of it, believe me. Um, ah, the interleave cover. So good. Claudio, you did a good job, by the way, singing on that. It was a really, really good job. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's just... Ah. So this may be a little controversial. But I feel that if I don't say it, then I'm not being honest. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I very seldom talk about my spiritual beliefs or anything of that nature, um, because I feel that sometimes those kinds of things have polarizing effects. So if you're the type that does not believe in any of these sorts of things, um, think of it as kinetic energy and uh, or just think of it as something that science hasn't discovered yet because I'm going to talk in weird esoteric terms here. Um, in my belief system, uh, energy, the energy of a human being when they pass is converted. And what happens is this energy is basically spread out and the individual gets to join these other ener energy forces and those energy forces bear down on the rest of us. And, and I'm not saying it correctly. Uh, I'm sorry, because it's, it's a really emotional thing to talk about. But sometimes someone will say, like, why now? Like, why was this person taken? And um, sometimes, you know, the easy thing to say is, like, I could think of a, a hundred not-so-good people that could have gone in, instead. <laughs> and it's a terrible thing to say, and I know it's terrible. But it's a thought that comes into your head, you know, with so many evil people in the world. Why take someone that was really good? And in my belief system, it's, it's actually a very good thing in a weird way. What it means is that that energy is needed and it, and it needs to be spread. Uh, it could be that the world at this moment is in short supply of that energy and that energy needs to be used. And you can't get it from someone who lives their life not that way. You would have to get energy from someone who could spread good energy. You would have to get this energy from someone that could um, be a force of good in that, in that form. And so I can very easily see Fega being one of those. And the reason that I say this is because I know how he touched me, but I wasn't aware of how many people were touched by him until after. And I saw it on Facebook, like people who said he helped me with, you know, this situation I was in. He got me out of this jam. He helped me deal with this. So I think that his energy was needed. So I can't speak for him. But I feel like I'm pretty sure he's like, I have a big job to do now. And it's a little bit bigger than just being on Earth. And um, for whatever reason, you know, uh, as they say, God has a plan. So I got a feeling that he's got, he's got some work to do. And what little bit of the energy I got, it helped me tremendously now like again someone could say hey it's your it's your imagination okay i can accept that someone believes that but the end result is the same so in my opinion if we take that energy and we use it to do good and live the way that person lived and if you can if you can see that as an example it's like he never judged anyone because he never did um 
I know we talked about very controversial subjects together, and he never once, um, we, we never got into heated arguments. He would say, in fact, I'm trying to remember how he, he worded it. It was as if to say, I disagree with what you're saying, but I respect completely the way that you're saying it, and I understand why, why you would think this way. Or his, his version of, of disagreeing was almost encompassing that disagreement. Um, and I find that interesting because we have this trouble now more than ever. I think white, someone thinks black. I think red, someone thinks blue. And it's like you can't, you, we can't imagine what the other person really feels. We just feel mired into whatever our own existence is, our own little world, and we kind of like stick to that little world at all costs, regardless of anything that comes our way, we're not going to shift. And he wasn't like that. He could be very, very convincing of his side of the story, but I never felt like we were having an argument. Um, and we got into some really controversial subjects. And I felt he was he was a good mediator. And so I believe that such energy is used to do good things in the world. And we need it because there's so much stuff going on right now that we need good energy. Not just from those that are that have passed that are going to give us that energy, but we need to take those examples and use that energy ourselves and be like, we need to step up. We need to be better people. All the way. All around. Ego has to be thrown out at this point. It's, it's, it's getting to a point, a boiling point, I think. And um, his passing sort of brought that home. So I've been, you know, I've been holding back a lot of things like, like ego in, infested things. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to try to approach things from a completely different point of view. Um, even when I think that the person is completely in, in the opposite of me. But I really do think we need to step up. If anything, that's a wake-up call, you know, to step up. So that's all I'm going to say about that. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because as much as I'm sad that he's gone, I'm happy that that's the kind of energy that's being spread in the world. Because if anyone had that kind of energy, I mean, someone can tell me about someone with that energy, but I don't know them. I kind of, I feel like I knew him really well to know that, that he's the right kind of energy. So that's, that's a special thing. And I don't know if I'm saying it correctly or if it's coming out the way I intended, but it wasn't planned. It's just, that's just the way I feel about it. So I'm going to play a song before I get myself in trouble. Um, I thought this was really funny, but it came up. He thought, I say he thought, see, so, that, so I'm starting to like be disarmed where I'm going to tell you like, yeah, we were having a full on conversation today. Um, so yeah, he, 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 he thought this was going to be a good idea. <laughs> the break the ice kind of stuff. So... I am going to uh, play a mix of a song that uh, I think I played it once and I think he really liked it. And uh, uh, I'm going to play it and, you know, you, you kind of, you'll, you'll figure it out. But anyway, I'm going to read your chats. We'll chat and I'll play the song and I'll put on the overhead. And this is the electromagnetic dub of a song you know.
So that was the uh, Living in Oblivion Chicago electromagnetic mix by Seven Red Seven. Um, so it's almost that time. And um, all I can tell you guys is that uh, he's going to continue to come up. Let's just face it. He's going to continue to come up because he was a big voice in this community. And um, I definitely, definitely uh, will bring him up whenever uh, he gives me a little push here and there. And uh, he will be, continue to be missed. So, oh man, this is rough. I can't, I can't even explain it to you how rough this is. It's not. I'm not sure uh, how to continue with this because it's so hard on me. Like, I don't know what to do. Ooh. But I will say this, learn, learn from this. Um, like I said, step up, start stepping up. We can all get better in any way that we can, right? So I'm going to play one of his songs. Um, this was one that uh, I know was one of his favorites because whenever I would do the rehearsals here on the stream, he would always love this. And it's one of Claudio's favorites too. And um, so it's one of those songs that uh, people ask me if I get tired of playing it live and all that stuff. And of course I don't. But I'm going to play the NMD version because, again, um, I want to honor my friend and he did you know you guys did some amazing versions of a box songs so this one's kind of funny in a weird way because alex told me a funny story about this song so um maybe we'll share it at some point but um i'm gonna play the nmd version of this and um we'll be winding down soon so I'm just going to play it. <laughs> no talking. I'm just going to play. Just play music. NMD. Doing our dreams. Mm -hmm. 